Oops. Okay. Welcome everyone. Uh, good morning. I'm Luke Fay with Sony Electronics. I'm here today to talk about some uh, advanced advertising and how it can be addressed. So today's agenda has uh, a few things that I'd like to go over. Uh, first, give you an idea of where the documents are for uh, understanding addressable advertising, how it can work. Then I'll go through uh, some ATSA 1.0 versions of advertising, just to get a uh, reference of where we're at today. Uh, and then I'll get into the hybrid model of over the air and over the top. Uh, what does that enable for addressable ads and how uh, that can really in increase business. Uh, give some program options, uh, then have some receiver operation examples uh, to see how it's done. And then we'll get into uh, uh, addressable advertising with a broadcaster application. Uh, and then finally wrap up with some opportunities. So to start off with, uh, here's an eye chart. Um, this is a, uh, a picture basically of all the standards of ATSC 3.0, uh, 19 in total there. Uh, and they're color coded uh, to make it easily understandable where they fit in a, um, in a model layer. At the bottom, um, over off, let's get a laser here. Oh, it doesn't fit on the screen. All right. Uh, at the bottom left-hand side, you can see uh, the physical layer, and on top of that gets into uh, some tans and greens of middle layer. Uh, and then on top uh, is the application layer. Often the middle of the slide uh, shows some uh, security and some other um, uh, options uh, that broadcasters can use. And then finally off to the right uh, are the, um, uh, I would say, uh, options that broadcasters could use if they had some extra resources, namely uh, the return channel uh, of the physical layer and, and options like that. But today, uh, for addressable advertising, there's uh, two main ones I'd like to uh, call out. It's A331, and uh, the second one is A344. Um, please feel free to take a picture. Uh, I've given the URLs where all those documents are located, um, and that URL is the same, but uh, you can search that website there. Uh, and download these documents. They're available today and uh, open for public uh, viewing. The signaling there is for IP packet creation and the um, uh, A344 is for the runtime environment. Okay. So where are we at today? Um, basically the 1.0 model is all controlled by a broadcaster and that's why there's a picture at the bottom uh, of a broadcast control center. Uh, they are in control. They have a linear feed um, you can start off uh, at the left with the program start um, whenever that started. Uh, then you have a pre-roll to get uh, the program up and running. Uh, and that could be triggered with uh, SCUDI 35. Um, and then we get into some optional ads uh, as time rolls by. So in the yellow, uh, you can see the program. And in the blue, you can see where ads are inserted. Uh, in typical uh, use today, you can have a bunch of ads together. So in this example, I have four ads bunched together, um, and then some time of program, and then again, uh, four ads bunched together. Um, basically, what I'd like to point out is that just before the blue, you can see a little small little blip uh, on the top of the uh, linear feed there. That's called a pre-roll. Uh, that's just there to get all the ads up and running before they actually get out over the air. And then I'd also like to point out that each ad in the blue boxes uh, is identifiable with a number. So it just, as in this example, it starts off with one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight, as the program rolls by. But what does ATSC3 hybrid offer you? Um, and in this diagram, I'd like to uh, show that it's a uh, ecosystem with some feedback. Uh, so off to the left, you can have your live linear feed, SDI feed coming into an encoder. Uh, that would feed a stat mux where you have other files available. Uh, now those files uh, should be uh, streaming kind of files. It's not uh, a full MP4 file. It's uh, dash formatted um, and uh, hits a stat mux that way. And also the, um, uh, the packager there uh, is kind of circling around uh, to the right a bit and you can see some um, uh, triggers happening there. So I'd like to point out the uh, SETE35 trigger, uh, which is used in today's uh, pre-roll uh, to start some advertising. That can be used again today with ATSC 3.0. So I'm going to use that same trigger uh, 
just like we're all used to, to uh, update some programming uh, for ATSC 3.0. If we go down on the right, uh, you can see that there's um, an OTA, which is I call uh, over the air. It's a sender. There's two main protocols. There's the root and the MMT. Uh, and then after that protocol sender, you would get IP packets. And those IP packets would feed a broadcast gateway. So uh, I've given some example equipment there of an Anensis uh, scheduler for the broadcast gateway and whatnot. But uh, out of the uh, broadcast gateway comes the ATS 83.0 over the air signal. And out of the dash packager, um, you can have an origin server sit on top of that uh, to feed the broadband uh, content distribution. So that's going off to the right. And then on the bottom uh, left, if we kind of make a circle about this, you can see uh, there's a traffic and scheduling uh, campaign management coming back into the broadcaster. Um, and he can uh, see what's going on and uh, has an automation system uh, in order to trigger when ads can become available. So let's look at this. It's the same concept, um, but instead of having that pre-roll, now we're going to have uh, that SCTE35 trigger uh, trigger an, um, an MPD um, update. So uh, that's in red, or the text in red. And uh, just as in this, in this example here, it's ad ID number one is also in red, and ad ID number seven, I believe. Yeah, ad number seven is also in red. So that's just an example of where uh, a specific ad can be addressable to a user. So the difference is how the ads are chosen and delivered. Before, if I can, oh, I, I guess I can't go back. Oh, here we go. Before we had the broadcaster in control at the bottom, and now we can have the user be in control of what ads he sees. That's the difference. So what is an MPD? Um, this is an example. It's basically a media presentation description, um, and the acronym is MPD. Uh, this could be an eye chart. At least it is for me when I'm seeing it on a small screen. Uh, but basically, you're seeing two periods of an MPD. And as time, time rolls by, uh, this MPD will be updated. So the first period will uh, expire, and the next period will roll up to be live. Uh, and then another period will be added after that. So it just keep, it keeps scrolling by. And what I want to highlight here in yellow is an X-Link. And uh, it's a very simple uh, command. You can see two lines there. It says uh, X-Link uh, actuate on uh, load and X-Link href ATSC3 slash slash uh, foo, whatever you uh, program you want. That's it. That's the, all the insertion you need to uh, do addressable advertising. If you're looking at a program track, um, time is on the bottom and going linearly off to the right in my mind in here. Um, but um, the programs that are available to a broadcaster are labeled up uh, in the stack. So a program on the bottom is linear, but there can be a series of chapters in that program. So uh, this example here has a chapter one, uh, and that could be a network feed, or the local affiliate uh, will not be touching advertisements because uh, it is uh, restricted uh, and reserved for those ads. Uh, but in chapter two, there could be a program ad that is local. And uh, for the local ad here, there could be two options. There could be ad ID number one or ad ID number two. Uh, seen on top, and uh, the choice is, okay, which one can be chosen, well, number one or number two? And in this example here, uh, we're using a targeted ad number two as an example. So on the receive side, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, you can have um, uh, a client's client-based version of addressable advertising, and you can have a server-side based. Um, and this option here, is for the client side base. So uh, the user's information does not uh, escape the receiver, uh, and all information and decisions can be done in that client device itself. So the basic concept is you have two inputs to a receiver. You have over the air with some rabbit ears, and you have the uh, internet connection from the cloud to the TV. And the picture on the TV uh, there is just a protocol stack of how to uh, get the signal, have it flow up into a user agent, which can render some runtime environment ads, uh, a runtime environment. Uh, and that uh, environment could have a broadcaster application there in white, uh, which uh, also feeds into some HTTP interfaces with um, uh, JavaScript and uh, some WebSockets there. So this is just very high level 
uh, what a receiver could do as an example uh, implementation. So what is a broadcaster app? Um, an example here is given of what it could look like. Um, in the background there, you can see a, a picture of windsurfing, uh, but it has like a brown gradient going off uh, from the left, and it kind of fades off to the right. And what that shows is just an indication something else is running on the TV that a user can interact with. And in this example here, we've brought up some weather uh, as well. And you can see that a guide has been pulled up along the bottom. And that guide just basically shows the current channel that's being watched. Uh, and if I would hit a, a right arrow on a remote, for example, the program there in the middle would be uh, highlighted. Uh, or if I keep going right, the next program could be highlighted. So there's choices of content that a broadcaster application can do. And that's exactly the, more, the power of ATSA 3.0 is the hybrid action of over the top and over the air interactivity. There's a few APIs uh, that are defined in A344. Um, so there's uh, resident media player selection, uh, two-way DRM, Widevine is an example of that DRM. There's some usage reporting, or you can have an X-Link resolution. So if I go back one slide, um, the X-Link and that NPD that, you, that we saw would flow up the protocol stack. And if a broadcaster application subscribes to X-Link and say, I can uh, resolve some X-Link, then it will be notified of that X-Link and do something with it. So if that X-Link comes in, um, we can have uh, some addressable advertising come in. I'd like to give one more option of what a broadcaster app can be. It's um, basically some uh, video on demand options. So broadcasters are no longer um, tied down to one program at a time. Um, it's kind of like offering more than Diginets. Uh, you can have your VOD service and you know, start to compete with Hulu or uh, Amazon Prime or some other uh, online services. So it gives them the ability to uh, stay in the game, yeah, if I can put it that way. So how are advertisements chosen? It's, um, uh, well, this PowerPoint slide here is broken into two pieces, uh, words on the left and uh, diagrams on the right. Um, and it's flowed, uh, the flow is from the top down. So the first thing that happens is uh, a query of, do you have enough memory? And that's, up at the, I'll watch the ledge here. At the top there, it says prepare local memory. And, yeah, that's the laser doesn't work. Um, the label off to the right in the, in the uh, picture has a BA label. That stands for broadcaster application. So the broadcaster app would say, you know, cash usage request, please, I want to store some ads. And then the response would come back with how much memory is available. The second thing was the broadcaster application registers for the X-Link notification. So it notifies the receiver, I can resolve some periods for you if an X-Link comes in. And that's the request here off to the right. Um, it says obtain MPD period or URL with X-Link. And basically what that does is you've notified the receiver uh, I need to cache some uh, data. So the receiver should go off and take a bit of time. That's why the arrow is off for a bit. Um, and it will be notified when some things become available. After that, the broadcaster app uh, resolves the MPD period and replaces it with either a URL. And that URL could be from his advertiser, uh, that advertising agency, or his own server, or wherever he likes it. Uh, or he can replace it with uh, the exact description of the MPD period with dash segments. So picture off to the right, um, uh, the receiver says status if the files are cached, yes or no. Um, and the next point down is receiver updates the MPD with resolved X-Lynx period. And that resolution is takes a bit of time. It says, okay, once I have all my files, and they're ready to go for the entire period, and the period could be 15 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it is for the advertisement, or it could be half hour if it's a replaced content. It doesn't have to be an ad. Anyways, if it's uh, got enough uh, segments to start playing, it doesn't need all the segments, just enough to get going, uh, then it can notify the broadcaster app, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. And the last point uh, is the receiver renders video with frame accurate resolution. Um, it may ask for extra features um, from the broadcaster app, like what are the filter codes? So these filter codes are basically um, indicate user interests. 
if a user is um, um, interested in travel or some food or something like that, there can be a menu guide in the Broadcaster app to let uh, the client device know these are some interest. And when the ads pop up, there can be a choice of food or travel or whatnot, and those can pop up. And that's what's indicated at the bottom here. Um, please get some filter codes uh, to help out uh, resolving what ad to play. So going back to this picture here, we have the MPD update um, send time, which is exactly lining up with the old pre-roll. So the SCTE 35 message can trigger, please update the MPD period with the next link. And the next ad after that with an ad ID number one can be selected by the client device to play rather than the original program. So that time difference there of a pre-roll can be selectable. And it is usually between three and five seconds is all that is required in order for receivers to render uh, you know, the beginning selections of an ad and, let, and get going for seamless operation. So it's not that long, it's, it's pretty quick. Um, hopefully that's a nice. Same thing at the uh, client device, you can have the track selection. And here, uh, instead of the um, broadcaster selecting track for a targeted ad in the cloud, it's the client now. And he can follow the same track, the, the same track as before. Uh, but it's an example that you know, the selection can be both uh, on the broadcaster and in the cloud or on the client device. Um, it just depends on which protocol he wants to use the protocol stack. So, if I can get in there, there we go. Last thing, um, what are some opportunities? It's very hard to see, but let me see here. ATSC three offers uh, some new technologies. So it's the hybrid operation over the top, over the air, and with a dash um, over the top digital services like Netflix and Hulu today, you can start to compete. Um, and that's uh, pretty powerful now. And with this new form of uh, streaming, uh, the advertisements can become more precisely addressable and focused on the individual customers. And delivery of ads uh, can be with replaceable MPD period URLs or the segment itself, uh, the text of the MPD period and devices that are not connected to the internet may still download replaceable content. So I didn't quite get into it too much detail because of time, uh, but basically in a broadcaster's um, uh, over-the-air signal, there can be space allocated in your capacity to send advertisements to store on a TV. So you can either say, all right, if, I, if a broadcaster app understands I have enough space to store an ad, a broadcaster can deliver addressable advertising over the air only. So devices don't necessarily need to be connected to the internet in order to, play out, to have targeted advertising. And that's pretty powerful. And it's a, it allows a better user experience uh, for the ATSC3. And lastly is that uh, advertising revenue may also increase as uh, the ads that can be viewed with uh, target, targeted ads, um, it's of higher interest to the users, it's more experience then those ads become more valuable uh, to the advertiser it's themselves. So that's it. Thank you. I'll take any questions. I didn't think I was that good. Okay. Thank you.